Guys, you know what I find so cool? Um, I have a blog post on this about my nystagmus. Um, I'll put like a link in here somewhere if you guys want to read it. Um, I actually wrote this in one of my papers in my fifth year. I got a 90 on it. Um, but I don't think I copy pasted it into my blog post. I think I just wrote like little snippets of it, kind of. What I've noticed about my nystagmus was I remember like about a few months ago, um, this guy asked me if I would be able to, if I'm able to see two things at once. And even when he asked me this, I was like, no, like, how, how am I supposed to do that? Kind of thing, you know? And the guy just looked at me like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Because if my pupils look at different, like, places at the same time, why wouldn't I be able to see two things at once, right? But for me, I just didn't really understand that when I was asked that question until a week ago. I was just thinking, I don't even know why I was thinking about it, but I was just thinking about what he said. And um, I was like, oh, let me just see if I can do that thing with my eyes again and see if I can see two things at once. So I can actually control my nystagmus, right? I don't know if I, I'm not going to do a close up because that's going to be a little creepy, but just pay attention to my eyes right now. I'm going to try to do that thing it does with nystagmus and then I'll tell you guys if I see two things at once. Okay? So here it goes. <laughs> guys, I was able to see two things at once. How? Like I genuinely felt like one of those metahumans on the flash and that was exciting because I like watching the flash. Hey guys, so in this video I want to be talking about what it feels like having multiple sclerosis young and the only reason I'm saying this is because I'm 22 right now. I actually got my multiple sclerosis diagnosis when I was 19 and that's hers. Um, the MSers I've actually been able to speak to have either been, like there's been a very few in their late 20s and majority of you guys have been in your 30s. Um, I would say more so your early 30s and for me I'm more in my early 20s and it's like I don't feel like there's a huge age gap between 20 and 30 but um, I don't know, like you know when you just want someone to talk to who's exactly your age and maybe a few days younger than you because It'd be cool to talk to a Scorpio, uh, but if you're 30 and you happen to be a Scorpio, then I think we get along. And another thing I found was that you MSers, majority of you guys also live in the States, which is so frustrating for me because I live in Canada. I just, it'd be really nice to talk to people in person and um, said no introvert ever. Um, <laughs> I'm not an introvert, by the way. Um, I mentioned before how I'm an extrovert and introvert. So I can be an extrovert with quite a few of you guys. However, um, I could be an introvert if you if you're just very intimidating. Like I can be an introvert on phone calls. Um, because I don't do well on phone calls. I always need a script. So in this video I'm just gonna be putting titles in this video, um, kind of going from topic to topic. Um, just so that it just makes sense in my head. And I just hope you guys enjoy this video. So apparently you can't do something as simple as walk to the goddamn bathroom without people literally staring at you. Um, and the only reason they also stare at me is because I look young, first of all. And second, when I linked to that intravenous infusion thing, it's like the stick thing, right? That's all the way up there. And to me, it's all the way up there because I'm only like 5'3", so I'm pretty tiny. Imagine going to the bathroom like probably seven times during the six hours you're at the hospital getting this intravenous infusion, right? For me personally, I can tell when people feel bad for me and I don't like how that feels. Like, especially when they look at me when I'm linked to that thing, it's like, I always feel like I need to explain that I'm okay. Like, you know what I mean? To people who I don't even know. And it's like, I don't like how this feels. Like, I don't like when people look at me, but I need to go to the bathroom to pee because I only have like two minutes before I end up peeing myself. Just having to roll that thing to the bathroom with you, it's like, I've tripped on it once on my very first day of receiving my infusion because I didn't know how to roll this thing with me to the bathroom. Like, it was just, this is why I don't walk with a cane by the way. I do feel like walking with a cane would help me, however, I know very well that I will most likely trip on it, so it's like, it's better to not walk with one, maybe. <laughs> I did trip that one time um, on my very first day of my infusion because I didn't know how to roll that thing to the bathroom with me, right? Um, and what was so bad about that was the fact that not, like, there was already people staring at me, right? And on top of that, um, when I tripped, 
They looked even more concerned for me. And to make things worse, the stupid machine literally beeps every time you literally make like the sudden movements. Like even if it's like the littlest movements, it'll start beeping and it's so annoying. Um, and people just start like kind of like freaking out for you in a way. They'll ask you if you're okay and they're only trying to be nice, but it's like... It makes me feel even more nervous. I have this thing of like, I feel like I'm doing it right now. I fidget my hands a lot when I feel nervous. Um, I don't I don't think it's MS related. I think it's just pre-related. But uh, yeah, I fidget my hands a lot um, when I'm nervous because I don't know, I just do. So the second thing I wanted to be talking about were the comments. Um, and it's just really weird because these are comments that I find that I get because I'm young with multiple sclerosis. But there was this one comment that I got um, from someone who was talking about exercising and how, you know, he was young and blah 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 blah. Um, and he, at one point he was like, you know, I'm able to exercise because I'm young, I have a healthy brain, and you don't. And I was just like, <laughs> guys, I was so speechless. I was just like, why would you say that to someone? What I find so hilarious is it's never MSers who make these ignorant comments. It's always people who don't have MS. Um, and I'm not saying that everyone who doesn't have MS are horrible people because this person wasn't even a horrible person. It's just the comment this person said. It was kind of like a little rude. Um... But I, I didn't even know what to say, I was just like lol because it was like, I didn't let it upset me just because he said that comment, you know what I mean? But I do find that the comments that I do get from people um, are usually from people who don't have MS and these comments um, usually pertain to my age. Like, you know, um, pre you're young, you shouldn't have multiple sclerosis and it's like, I never asked for multiple sclerosis, like you know what I mean? And it's like, it's so annoying when people literally say that to me all the time. And it's like, just shut up. Just do me a favor and just shut up. There was this, there's this one comment where someone was apologizing to me, um, where they were like, I'm so sorry you have multiple sclerosis, you're so young. And it's like, but no, I don't see it that way. In fact, I'm actually really glad I got diagnosed young. Because for about two years, I literally was living my life in curiosity. Like, I didn't have answers to questions that I had. Like, for the things that I was unable to do, I didn't know why I was unable to do it. I just thought I was just being an idiot. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm so glad I got diagnosed when I was 19 because it explained everything that I was unable to do for two years, kind of thing. Whereas, if had I got diagnosed, let's say, when I was 65, um, I'm kind of like fast tracking here, but um, if I get if I got diagnosed when I was 65, right? Like sure, I would have been able to do more things. However, I would have had to live my life in curiosity for much longer, and that wouldn't have been worth it for me. And it's like because I got diagnosed young, I'm happy about it because I now know what works for my body and what doesn't, and I can improve from here on. Like you know what I mean? Like. Especially with going vegan, I feel like one of the main reasons, like aside from the fact that I'm allergic to eggs, what another reason why I went vegan was because of my multiple sclerosis. I was just so convinced that every single time, you know, I ate meat, I just felt so crippled. And yes, I'm saying crippled, and I'm sorry if I offend any of you, but I just couldn't move my body. Like, that's how bad it was. Um, and I just kind of like went vegan because it was just my way to make sense of everything and it's been helping me so much and um, had I got diagnosed much later on in life I probably would have become a vegan much later on in life um, and I honestly when I think about it now and it's like no I, I'm actually really glad I went vegan when I turned I think I don't even know how old I turned but it was in 2019 of January so it's been about a little over oh my god it's been a year and a half now that went fast okay um, and had I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, like when I was 65, let's say, I would have been eating weight for much longer and kind of like in my head, I'm just seeing it as I would have made things worse for myself for a longer period of time. Like I'm glad I made the decision to go vegan um, in January of 2019 because it was honestly the best decision that I've made.
third thing I've written down is that I'm not able to connect with many MSers that are closer to my age. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's because people just don't open up about it. I don't know what it is. But aside from that, I'm actually really glad I've been able to connect with MSers regardless of age because you guys are amazing. You guys understand me and it's like not a lot of people do. Like I feel like I can't connect with a lot of people my own age. I feel like I've literally been able to connect with people in their 30s because they're so much more easier to talk to. Is that weird? Um, or like even their late 20s. People who are like in their early 20s, it's like, I don't know, I just have a harder time talking to because I can't connect with them. An overactive bladder was just something I was kind of in denial about because I wasn't old, nor was I a baby. So why was I experiencing that overactive bladder, right? And it's like, I, I understood that I had multiple sclerosis, but it was like, I wasn't able to connect with a lot of people who were also going through what I was going through in terms of an overactive bladder because even with the MSers I've been able to connect with, there's not, I don't know if I've really ever talked to anyone who has an overactive bladder per se, but rather I've been able to talk to people like MSers who have issues with their bladder but they have issues releasing what they need to like, you know. Um, and for me, I experience both. For me, I have an overactive bladder but even when I sit on the toilet, sometimes I, a lot of the times actually, I will forget how to pee or even take a shit. So when I forget how to pee, I will just turn the faucet on because that's how I figured myself out. Because when I listen to water, I will need to pee. Um, and when I need to take a shit, I'll literally just spank my bum and I will literally need to take a shit. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I was in denial in a way because I wasn't experiencing an overactive bladder because I was a baby, nor was I experiencing it because I was old, but I was experiencing it because of my multiple sclerosis that I just happened to have in between those two ages, right? And it was like, I didn't really know of a lot of people who were like from, what, like age 10 to like 40 or 50. But even just having like um, that terrible bladder and just having screwed up vision, um, I was just in denial about because it was like, I just feel like people closer to my age don't really go through things that I go through. Or like if they do, it's like they just don't talk about it. Um, but yeah, denial was just something that was just really hard for me to like figure out. Um, especially when I wasn't able to walk. Um, in 2017 and like even when I was like with a group of people or I just wanted to walk right I would just often find myself just being like yeah I don't want to walk or yeah I'm not feeling good when really I just couldn't walk for more than a minute um, but I was just in denial about that because I was so young and everyone else who are closer to my or just pretty much close to my age were able to do many of the things that I was just not able to do and I mean they're still able to do a lot of things that I'm still not able to do but there's nothing wrong with that and I was just in denial at the time about the things that I couldn't do but I think about it today and I just think it's okay it's okay to be different it's okay to not be able to do things that other people around you can um, especially when they're like your age and you're young and yeah <laughs> it is what it is but it's like this experience is teaching me a lot so it's like I wouldn't have it any other way with these insecurities it's like the things that people who are young are able to do I just can't do like for people who want to go on long walks or for people who want to go on bike rides or for people who want to do like all of these little things that you wouldn't think to be a big deal for people like me um, I just can't do or like I'll just have a harder time doing but um, yeah it's like I sometimes just find that I can't hang out with people because I feel insecure sometimes because it just feels like I'm stopping people my age from doing things that I can't do because I'm slowing them down. Like with walking, let's say, because people like walking fast, I can't walk fast. I can only walk fast actually for like five minutes and after that I'm done, like I need to sit. Um, and yeah, so it's just that's just been a really big insecurity for me. I would say walking and my bladder. Like people my age, like usually when they find out that I make videos on YouTube, they'll get excited and then when they realize that I don't vlog, they're just like, oh, what do you make videos about? Um, and I'll tell them and um, 
it's like they lose interest, like they just don't care. But it's like, I'm sorry, like I don't want to make videos on vlogging. Like, I want to talk about things that not a lot of people talk about and things that are stigmatized because it's, it's sad. It's so sad that people don't talk about these things. Like a lot of these vloggers, right, I'm pretty sure experience all these struggles but they just won't talk to you about. You know what I mean? And it's like, it shouldn't be that way. Everyone should be open. Like you should build a community with the things that you go through and that's what I'm trying to do, right? And it's like, it's been working out great for me because I've been able to connect with not only messers but with people who also have an overactive bladder or have a hard time walking or who have shitty vision but not because they need glasses but because they have double vision or they have like some other problem with their vision and eyesight. I want to be there for people, you know what I mean? Like in 2017, I didn't really have a lot of people to talk to and it's like if I'm able to connect with a lot of people or just people in general who need someone to talk to, I want to be that person. I want to be there for you. And it's like, I never liked feeling alone ever in my life, especially with being bullied. I've experienced a lot of feeling lonely. Um, and it's not the best feeling. So if I can be that person to help you, I want to be that person. And just send me a message on Instagram. So, yeah. So the ninth thing I wanted to just quickly mention, but I'm not going to honestly talk any, say anything about because um, I do want to make a video on this, but the ninth thing is Ocrevus. So I'm currently on Ocrevus. It'll be three years, I think in November of this year, or it could be December, I honestly forget. Um, I started getting these infusions in 2017. Um, and I, I will talk more about that um, in a video that I do film about this. However, just even the fact that I even have to be on infusions at a young age is just really scary to me. So that's pretty much it to my video. I literally have class in two minutes on Zoom. I need to go. But um, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this video. Um, and let me know how old you are with multiple sclerosis or when you found out. Because I would love to hear from you guys. And that's pretty much it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. I'll post links down below as always. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. I literally, oh my god, I run out of breath every time I talk. I think I'm just getting nervous. Okay. The nurse is going to have to literally take off all that tape. I don't know how men do this, by the way. But um, this one time I didn't shave my arms. And guys, I have fine hairs on my arms, okay? And I hate when the tape is like ripped off my arms by the time my infusion is done. Like how do you men do it? Like do you guys only shave one arm? Because you get to pick what arm you want to do it on. But I feel so bad for you guys because it's like, it's like waxing. But you guys don't wax. Women wax. And it's like I know what waxing is like because I wax my own eyebrows. But like, I feel bad. Like how do men do it?